and welcome to Penelope's Chinwag. My name's Penny. I live in the southeast of England with my husband Pete and my chickens. So yes, it's just a quick chat really today. I found a little time this afternoon to be able to chat to you, but I've got a fairly busy week. Don't ask me at the minute what with, um, because I, I won't recall it. I just know I look on my, my diary and ah oh, yes, ah oh, yes, ah oh, yes. So, but at the minute, I've got a little time to chat and I hope you'll join me. So what will I chat about? Well, I always sit down and think, what on earth am I going to talk about? What's it going to be about today? It's my sixth episode and um, I just didn't dream that I would be doing this then. I say that all the time, I know. So I think I'll just have to start again. All this will be outtakes, but it's true. I'm really getting to know some of you. Oh, and I want to say a special hello to Mandy. Um, my daughter went to a wedding this week and Mandy was there as she was the mother of the uh, of the what of the bridegroom yeah of the bridegroom I haven't been used to bridegrooms I've had two girls so they've been used to brides anyway she was the mother of the bridegroom still is and um, she said she watches chinwag which I didn't know so I'd like to say hello to you Mandy hope you're watching this week Ah, oh, it's been one of those weeks very busy we were a little bit like that. Well, mum was after after the Queen, you know, after her funeral. I think she's the same age as the Queen. I'm in between Prince, well, King Charles and and Princess Anne. And, and so having children together and that, you know, all of that. And, um, well, she, she just felt a bit, yeah, she's fine now. Spent a bit of time with her yesterday. Well... Yesterday afternoon we did Chinwag. We're doing 1950 this week. Uh, she tells us a little bit about her life and incorporates that into what's going on in the world at the, at the time. Ah, I've been for a walk this morning oh, and I saw something I wanted to buy. I didn't buy it. I was very good. But on the other hand, I can't stop thinking about it. So... Probably I'll go back and buy it. I like to do that, do you? I'm not an impulse buyer. I like to think about it. And then if I can't put it out my head or I forget it, then I know it's not for me. But if I can't put it out my head, I know I really want it. And what it is, is you know those beautiful baskets that are made in Africa? I've seen them on other people's podcasts. One's with a handle and one's just a beautiful round you know, woven basket. I thought, oh, that would be lovely for the wool. It was in my local shop. It's an unusual shop. It sells all different sorts of things. I think at once, one time she was a florist, but now she's gone on to unusual things. And she obviously feels these baskets suit, and they do. And so, well, I was out for a walk, so I couldn't walk home with two. But I said to Pete, I really fancy them. I'd use them all the time. So, yes. That might be a purchase. And then we have a wool shop, but she's only open just a couple of days at the end of the week. And I had a little look through, and I do love West Yorkshire Spinner's wool. And, ah, uh, yes, I came back and saw online a pattern that I really want just to go with these dresses. And I think I might treat myself to that. Although I've had a good clear out this week, all my boxes of wool are labelled, my stash, all different sock wool, oddments, must use. Um, but the wool I fancied, it's a chunky and I don't ever knit a chunky. It's a lovely pattern. I thought it'd be lovely for the winter indoors as well. I don't knit chunky because my hands are quite small and it's too big a needle. But I thought it'll knit up quick and I can just do a few rows every day and that won't be too bad so I've got that in my mind so that's where I am with my crafting I'm knitting the habitation throw I think it's called I've been knitting it for quite a while but don't know I mean as a crafter we never know what might come in our heads and what's come in my head is do some work on that blanket so I've been knitting on that uh, recently just while I've been watching Strictly and it's a very easy knit, 
and it's a, a nice size blanket just to put over the knees you know when I'm on the set sitting on the settee so that's on the needles I'll show you a bit more of that next week hopefully I've made a bit more progress and I've been sorting out things that I want to make for the winter but what I need the wool for because I've got plenty of stash and I've got patterns to go with that stash but there are things I want to make a pair of a pair of mittens um, because I've bought a new coat and it's a beautiful coat it's waterproof fully waterproof very light but very warm perfect little hat and it's my colors I bought it from sea salt and I'm really thrilled to bits with it I went for a walk in it today walked back along the seashore chat going in swimming nobody was out by their beach huts but the beautiful sound of the sea it was lovely because the tide was just on the turn and the sea was all sparkly so I enjoyed my walk back and my coat was just right but I think it's going to be just perfect as well on those freezing winter days so I've been pleased with that purchase uh, oh and I bought a little pair of wellies as well from sea salt beautiful fur lined oh I should have to show you won't I I'll show you next week I'll get togged up in it remind me anyway uh, so yes I, I had a look in the wall shop I had a look in the other shop and yeah oh so I haven't been out for well many years as you know because I'm here and you know I'm with mom and we take care of ourselves but Ali Pali is on Alexandra Palace and I mean that's you know 15 minutes from where I used to live and my friends up there so I'm going to Ali Pali it's Saturday week and oh I think they'll spread it out beautifully and I don't plan on buying a lot that said she but I'll show you if I do buy anything but I just want to go I've got my mask ready I'm going to keep my mask on all the time and yes hopefully keep myself safe but have a little trip out um yeah so that's that's what I'm planning to do so of course I've had a good look through my stash I've got plenty of fabric that's fine um just I'd like some Jameson and Smith um wool and I might buy the chunky wool if my wool shop's got it if not I shall try and get some there I'll see I'm just gonna have a glide round and just be with friends and and just see what's what's on offer one of my viewers her quilt was put up on little workroom crafts she said she'd finished a quilt this week didn't you Karen and and it's a, a lorry halt and it's beautiful it's completely different to the quilts I make um, but wow oh I just had a phone call I was, and it was smart frogs and she said oh Penny your quilt you know my storm at sea quilt I decided to have it professionally quilted I'm going to pop round and just have a look at it before we choose the binding I'll tell you what I'll do I'll show you what it looks like and I'll put it up here uh, before I upload this anyway I'll show you my little thing that I'm making for baby baby's a boy a boy is expected in February and Mila who is my granddaughter's little girl she'll be three in November well apparently she's in Turkey and I've got a photo through of her ready to go uh, but I've also got a similar photo of her mum who was, was she now 27 or something and uh, yeah pretty similar oh what have I got here I've just got a pile of stuff I'm quite unorganized ah so this is row one there's row one remember there we are there's row one and then row two and then 
Will I have to stand up? Row three. Oh, that way I'm doing it, aren't I? Oh. <laughs> Row three. So here we are, Peter Rabbit. It's coming along. So for a little boy, I'm going to choose a blue thread. And then I think with the pink in it, that will reflect his sister. So uh, yeah, I'm happy with it. It's very simple. I said that at the beginning, if you wanted to follow along, 10 and a half inch square and then a couple of what episodes ago I told you what to cut it's just two and a half inch squares six and a half by two and a half and you put them together to make the other blocks shall we do the fascinating fact it's about oh, a starfish only at night does the brittle star venture out of its hiding place to snake across the surface of the reef because shining a light on an outstretched limb might just cause the animal to hide. And the guy who, who wrote this said, it intrigued him because they can detect light, but he's ne they haven't got eyes. They have a hard internal skeleton made up of small calcite plates held together by catch connective tissue. Some brittle stars have responses to light that do seem to require an eye. When placed in bright sunlight, members of those species will make for a shadowed area as fast as their five little arms can carry them. So how do they do it? Well, when scientists examined the skeletal plates of the brittle star, they saw an unusual pattern of densely packed crystal clear bumps, each thinner than a human hair. These crystalline bumps, made of calcium carbonate, proved to be high quality micro lenses that focus light onto what seemed to be photosensitive nerves just below the plates. The lenses have the exact shape needed to produce the desired image. And so, taking a lesson from the biology of the brittle star, researchers have devised a simple, low-cost method of producing arrays of micro lenses made of calcium carbonate. The many applications of these arrays include telecommunications, where they are used to conduct light signals through optical fibers. I just thought that was so interesting. For me, I just think, well, where's its eye? But here we go. All of that calcium carbonate makes up this sending the messages to the nerves and, well, scientists can use it, as I said. It's fascinating, isn't it? But it's taken other, you know, biologists years to fathom that out because they said we can't see an eye it hasn't got an eye it can't see but they realized it could so a lot gained through just looking at that brittle what was it I oh, see I've forgotten already is it a bony brittle bony brittle yeah whatever it was I've been talking about <laughs> right I'm gonna go before I get myself in any more trouble and we'll go over and visit mum now. So it's 1950, a little bit about her history and a little bit about world history. I'll see you after that. Hello. Hello. We're back again oh, and we're going yes. to do 1950, mum. Yes. Yeah. And at the beginning of 1950, well, at the beginning of 1950, I was six months. Yes. And so you've got a six-month-old baby. Yeah. Your husband's back from doing what he was doing he in was the... He was doing it out of the Air Force. Out yes. the Air Force, that's yes. right. 
And he had, you said, he had in his mind the thoughts. He had washing machine head like me, didn't yes. he, man? <laughs> yes. his, his brain was always ticking over with yeah. something. Yeah, yes. and it didn't stop, did it? Mine doesn't no. stop. <laughs> no. And his plan was then youth. I said it was some time after that his plan came to fruition. Oh, yes. Definitely. About working for himself. Yes. But uh, you he, knew it was there in his had, head. He had got a new job because yeah. two men had come back from the war and taken over um, in his old job. Right. Because he had really replaced a man in that job that yes. was at the war. Yes. And it was quite the other side of London, which was a long trip. Right. So he'd got himself a new job. Yeah. And and his brain was always busy yeah. thinking I'd always he'd like to work for himself yeah. but he hadn't worked it all out then but that was all that was in his brain really from from when you were really newborn. And so did you used to go along with him, like and say, Oh, that would be a good idea, love or did you think secretly, Oh no, what does all that mean? No, because most of the thoughts that he'd always had yeah. doing different things always came to fruition in some way. That made sense and to you? Yes, definitely. Right. Okay. And although I often wondered, you know, how it would, yeah. how things would yeah. go, did that I had mean? to leave him. Right. Really. Yeah. But we always talked about things. Right. We never kept things to ourselves. No. So it you was chatted all, it over. I knew exactly what was in his mind. Oh, right, he told you. Yes. 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 Oh, well, so there you are in 1950 with a six-month-old baby, which yes. is me. You didn't work, did no. you? And Dad was working. I think yes. he must have worked really hard yes. because that was yes. his nature, wasn't it? And long hours then. Long hours, yes. yes. Long hours for not too much money. That was the thing, wasn't it? We've got uh, in America, Mum, the Atomic Energy Commission. They are researching, they want to produce a bomb that will be a thousand times more powerful than the ones dropped in uh, oh. Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And... <laughs> London, it says, Britain, asked the US for a stockpile of atomic bombs. Oh. Yeah, so, you know, things, yes. although you've had gone through that yes. war, and again, Mum, looking at all the pictures during 1950, I don't know where to put this, shall I put it down here? Yeah, they, you know, there's a lot of heartache going yes. on, really. A lot of heartache. Well, 50 was the beginning. They were beginning to think about war in Korea, weren't they? Exactly, Mum. That was the awful things going on there. Exactly. So you've got, you know, the pictures of the darling yes. people there and little streams of children walking along the roads with their hands and up. And, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's it's heartbreaking, really. And when that war did come, we yes. lost quite a few men in that war. Yeah. That Changing the subject from war, it says in March 1950, there was a study that said that only 46% of British households have a bathroom. Yes. That's just under half. Yes. Didn't have a bathroom. No. You didn't, did we you? We didn't have a bathroom no. until we got went to Harlow. Yes, well, that was many quite years, some time, yes. wasn't it? Yes. Yes, so what did you do? How did you well, wash? we went to the public baths, right. which, of course... Um, cost money to go to but the public bars were there and um, there was a section of that which was where you could take children or babies or whatever yeah. um, and things were laid out you know for the for children. children as well yes yes but so, other than that was it well you had a sink now didn't you yes we had a Butler sink, Butler and of course, sink. Yeah, I used to sit you in there yeah. until you got. <laughs> and so, to... was it washdowns for you? Yes, that's right. You yeah. we called them up and downers. <laughs> up and downers, yes. Variety house, you had an up and yes. downer in the kitchen. Yes. Well, 
I wonder if, yes. if you took people's because baths. Because when I was small, we yeah. had a tin bath, oh, so I right. was quite used to yeah. having a bath that At way. Home, yes. Yes. And standing in that and just standing yeah. up. And But of course, and no tin bath for you because no. you were upstairs, weren't yes, you? Yes, that's right. Yep, so yes. so up and down is in the kitchen, Mum. Yes. We had uh, 80 killed in the world's worst air crash. And it happened not far from Cardiff yes. with um, Welsh rugby supporters, supporters on it. Yes. So that was, that was jolly. Yes. And then customs men, they raided a transatlantic liner. And they seized it because the whole liner, it says, the whole liner, they boarded the ship and found it was stuffed with nylons. Nylon. So that here we are. We, we've said this before, yeah. haven't we? Yeah. How, you know, women just yeah. wanted to get their hands on these nylons. nylons. And um, there they were, all in this ship. And because if you could, could get a pair of nylons, they were jolly expensive. Yes. So. The yeah, well, they said it was worth the haul was worth eighty thousand pounds. Yes, eighty thousand yes. pounds. And we just read, mm. looking through this before we started, that a, a teacher. I'll come to that bit in yes. a minute. But a teacher earned five hundred pounds, pounds a year. Yes, ten pounds a week. Ten yes. pounds a week. Yes, ten pounds a week for a teacher, mum. Mm. Yeah, which was a, a fair wage. Was it? Yes. Yes, because um, I think Dad probably five. If if he earned five pounds, uh, yeah, our rent then was fifteen shillings a week. So that was under a pound, right? But of course, it was really we only had a couple of rooms. But yeah, but if you had a nice flat, it was probably one pound something or. Two pound would well, fifteen be, would, shillings would, would, under a pound because there's twenty yes, shillings in a, right, pound. a pound. Yes, oh, fifteen yeah. shillings was yeah, under a pound. Of course it yes. was. Uh, uh, so ten pounds a week was a jolly good jolly good salary. good salary. Yes. And it's got yes. here. The government reveals plans for Britain's sixth atomic centre uh, at Aldermaston in Berkshire. Berkshire yes. And last week um, I talked about that because I yes. had a. An Aldermaston thing, ban the bomb, you know. Ban the bomb, that's I right. had it in yes. the hamper and I read, yes. uh, read about it. There were lots it. of protests then. There was. Oh. Yes, there was, Mum. About they were starting that. to yes. come up, yeah. Yes. Petrol rationing ends. We're in May. A motoring booms as petrol rationing ends. It says the first Whitson holiday since petrol rationing ended brought out traffic described by an AA official as an all-time record. From as far as 10 miles out, he said, cars were coming into London at 11pm in a solid mass. There were more than 10 hours of sunshine from Kent to Lincolnshire. The end of the rationing will be a great boon to holiday resorts. Yeah, they let yes. off rockets and balloons. And shares of hotels rose in expectation of the announcement. At some garages, drivers tore up coupons and danced round their cars oh. because petrol had been rationed mm. for 10 years. Yeah. yeah. But I think we saw yeah. that it went up to three shillings a gallon, a gallon, didn't it? Yes. Yes, petrol goes up around three shillings a gallon, mm. its highest price mm. since 1920. So again, we've got here North Korea, Mum, South yes. Korea, yes. and um, the first transplant of a kidney in the US in July 1950. And we've got Frank Sinatra making his debut in London last night at an ovation at a London Palladium mm. that was oh, besieged yeah. by fans. Yes. And uh, oh. he's... Because we'd seen him on the films. So yes, was, absolutely. Oh, there he was. Uh, yes. He was mobbed. Sinatra, whose career began 10 years ago yes. with the Tommy Dorsey band, has only been seen here in films, yes. you're right, yes. currently on the town as one of the three yes. sailors on leave. Yes. So this was July 1950. Okay. We've got um, the Korean conflict begins to suck in world yes. powers. So... This is all oh. happening. Yep. 
Not very yeah, good. No. And we've got the channel record set by a lady swimmer. Uh, she cut an hour off the time. She went from France to oh, Britain. Oh, yes. yes. Princess Anne is born, Mum. Oh. August, she was the Queen's second child, wasn't yeah. she? Yeah. Princess Elizabeth yes. gives birth to her second child, a daughter, yes. on the 15th of August. August. So she's a year younger yes. than me. Yes. Yeah, she did well last week, yes. didn't she? Oh, definitely. I think it shook us yeah. all up last week, yeah. did it, you? Yes. Your insides it a got a bit. It was a different world, world completely for the whole week, wasn't it? was. It? That's how you yes. felt. And to think now that she, um, Prince Charles is now King Charles. Yes, you know. we've got to get our heads yes. around that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Now he's going to be doing this and doing that and, uh, yeah. Got quite a he lot. was just a little boy in 1950. Yes, he was. Yes, he was two years old. He was born 48, 48 was he? Yes. Right, I was born 49 yes. and Princess yes. Anne was born 1950. Yes. Yeah, so um, we got a couple of plane crashes, Mum, in October, one of which was in Mill Hill, North London, which was a stone's yes. throw from yes. really where you lived. Uh, yes. 28 died and then um, oh this is when the salaries were announced new salaries um, 630 pound for men and 504 pound for women women teachers yes. yeah so December 1950 we got China entering the war uh, dear the pictures here aren't nice at all mum no but We've got the hits of 1950. I've got a lovely bun bunch of coconuts. <laughs> Here they are, a standing in, in a, a row. row. Big ones, small ones, one as big as your head. Oh. <laughs> What's the next line? What's the next line? A diddly dee -di Oh, we're back to that diddly dee yes. now. <laughs> no, did 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 it. Did it. Oh, oh, I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts. Oh. <laughs> You've got to sing it in a Cockney accent, Mum. And yes. then we're on to Jew January 1951. So yeah. tell me, what sort of clothes did you wear? Well, they were a mixture of wool and and serge, like so. They were heavy. Just, yes, they were heavy, heavy skirts and. For winter, yeah, warm costumes. We did. I think we 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 began to do a lot of knitting then because wool was yeah. big. You would go, and of course, when you knit knitted jumper, then you went to the wool shop and they put your wool away. You didn't buy all the wool. You couldn't you couldn't afford, afford it. No, all the wool that you, you bought needed. one ounce yeah. at a time. Yeah, but also when you think about it, Mum, I was thinking about this this morning. I don't think the wool was like the wool we've got no. now. No. It was a lot itchier. Yes. And yes. Uh, did, could you get acrylic, I wonder? Could you, or was it or all? not? No, I think no, that came that was later. quite a long time yes. afterwards, acrylic. So, so you were wearing up. quite heavy wool clothes yes. Yes. and you were knitting your own yes. uh, jumpers, but it was quite substantial yes. wool, let's yes. put it like that. Yes. And the shoes, I was thinking about stilettos, but of course no. they were much later, yes. weren't they? Yes. What sort of shoes did you wear? Shoes came out then with like Cuban heels, right? Which were looked very smart, yeah. If you need if, if that's you know for weekends, yes, or if you were going out, yes, but not anywhere near as high as no. what you would call a high heel then, yeah. And in the summer, well, I remember obviously I was only a year then, but I didn't remember that year, no. But you used to wear quite very full, full cotton skirts, skirts. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. And uh, did you ever knit in cotton? I don't think so. I think it no. was always wool, no. wasn't it? Yes, always wool. Yeah. So here we are then. So next time it will be 1951. Yes. And um, yes, baby will be growing up. Yeah. And things will be moving on yes. for you. I know yes. we've talked about that, yes. but I've never really thought about what was going on, especially this Korean War, yeah. while you yes. were bringing up little yes. one and, and yes. trying to sort out somewhere decent to live, live, you know. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So, all right then, we'll talk about that next yes, time. Then. lovely. Yes. Yeah. So we'll say so, cheerio. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.
Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And Mum sends all her love to you. She thoroughly enjoys doing chin wag. And yes, I read her all your um, good wishes and she sends back to you too. So in the little film this week, well, I have got a little film here that I'm just going to pop up. It's just going to be a quick one, but I can't resist. Because when I look out of my kitchen window, actually, I was making yoghurt before I came on. And you have to boil the milk before you put it in the, you know, yoghurt maker. And uh, I, that's something I do. I make my own bread in the bread maker, a, a nice wholemeal loaf, and I make my yoghurt. It's a new thing. I bought it when my friend was visiting, uh, yeah, about four weeks ago now. But every I make it anyway. It's lovely. And so you have to bring the milk to the boil. And of course, I got I got waylaid. Oh, Pete's out in the garden now. The sun's shining. Can you see it? Yes, you can see him just walking down. He's, he's putting some uh, lamb hocks in the slow cooker. And I think he's going down there to get some rosemary. Anyway. Anyway, what? What? What's I talking about? Oh yes, I put the milk on to boil. You bring it to the boil for the yogurt and then you let it get to 43 degrees centigrade. Of course, I was so taken with what was out the window. We've had flocks of the um, blue tits and great tits. We've had uh, quite a few robins uh, chasing each other all around and uh, chaffinches. Anyway, it's just a tiny quick film because the tree, I don't know if you remember the tree that's outside my kitchen window. The whole tree is covered in white blossom like jasmine and it smells like jasmine. We wish we knew what it was called. We don't know what the tree's called. But the smell on the patio when that blossom comes out is exquisite. It comes out in August and then September we start it all those blossoms start changing into these red leaves and then in the center of the red leaves is a beautiful um you know like a what do you eat for breakfast um you know you see the whole thing this week is a you know blueberries looking out at the birds and that I completely forgot the milk and some of it. Just, what oh, just caught it. So you can see where I am on episode 60, can't you? So I'm going to say cheerio. And, oh, we've got a cat in the garden. We haven't got a cat. But, you know, I love my birds. I don't want it in the garden. What can you do? I said to Pete, I want Friday to ourselves. We have busy week. And um, I want to have keep Friday to ourselves and I want to go somewhere. So we're going to go, hopefully this week, we're going to go to the RSPB at Stodmarsh, which is near Canterbury. So, well, we'll see if we get there, depending on the weather. But last Friday, we've got a little zoo on the way to Canterbury. It's not a big one, but it is, it's a lovely little zoo. I went with Tommy. So it's just a little short film of Tommy at the zoo. He's coming on in leaps and bounds. And I've got him to for tomorrow for the day. So I'm looking forward to that. So I'm going to say cheerio. <laughs> You'll be pleased. And I love you and leave you. Thank you so much for joining me. And hopefully things will be a little bit calmer next week. I remember who I am and where I am and what I'm supposed to be talking about. And I have some things to show you maybe. So until then, take care, enjoy your week and thanks for sharing. Bye.
Kai's been there and he said it's brilliant lunch. Colin. Colin. <laughs> <laughs> 